Well, uh, Paranita has already I mean, said something about Western Ghats and the rivers there. So what I would like to do is logically take it from the Western Ghats from Maharashtra to Karnataka and to share with you uh, two rivers which are almost kind of on the deathbed and uh, another two rivers which are still free flowing and living and how it is being done you know, from the people's movement point of view. And uh, you see, uh, we are, I'm talking about the river Kali which orig originates on the border of uh, Goa and Karnataka. Uh, you know, from the sea, if you just calculate the kind of distance, it's just 40 kilometers. But it takes this circuitous route and then joins the sea, which is 189 kilometers. It's very interesting kind of river. And then uh, we have another river, which is, this is the Sharavati, mm. where we have the large dams here. And then the living rivers, which is, uh, this is Agnashini. Uh, just next slide, next slide. Yeah, this is Agnashini, which is the living river, and then the Bedti. So how it is living and how the rivers are dead. Yes, we'll just stop. Uh, yeah, you know, you can stay. Yeah. Okay. You see, uh, tropical forest, you know, when we talk of Himalayan rivers, it's fed by the snow. And the Western Ghats rivers are fed by the tropical forest. And that is a very, very important difference, as you showed in your picture also. But uh, unfortunately, what has happened over the years? Because of the kind of hilly regions we have, as you said in the beginning, the engineers think it is a resource to be exploited. And let me tell you, the entire Western Ghats is a kind of powerhouse. Powerhouse? to generate electricity for the, for the cities or where, wherever it is. And uh, Kali is a very, Kali Valley is a very interesting example where just one river generates 1,900 megawatts of power. Just one valley. And uh, not only that, the other rivers like Sharavati also, we had, ex Karnataka was, you know, had excess of power, like Maharashtra also had excess of power. But over the year, how have we treated these resources which produce electricity? And I think it's a very interesting aspect of the, of the rivers in Western Ghats. You know, the west flowing rivers are the powerhouse. The east flowing rivers are the lifeline for the entire Deccan Plateau, from Kaveri to Krishna to Godavari, and all these huge irrigation projects which we talk of, which are the kind of uh, rice granaries, rice bowls of Deccan Plateau that emerges from Western Ghats, from the tropical forests of Western Ghats. And that is a very important contribution of the Western Ghats. One side, it is the Deccan Plateau, the security of the water security of the Deccan Plateau. On another side, the power or the energy security for the entire Western Ghat region or even the IT sectors in Bangalore is powered by the Western Ghats which we always forget. And even the Goa tourism industry, you know, it gets most of its power from Karnataka, from these rivers, which are based in Western Ghats. So uh, instead of looking at these rivers as a resource, what we have done is we are kind of exploiting them. And today, what, what is the state of these rivers? As I said, I mean, Kali, six rivers already standing, and they want to build the seventh river. Seventh dam, I mean, seventh dam. Six, six dams are already there. And they want to build the seventh one. And uh, to give it to a private party so that they can earn a lot of money, which we were able to stop. And uh, when we opposed the dam building in, in other areas, in the Beti and uh, uh, the Living Rivers, they said, look, we need to generate power. And these are the excellent sites, as you said, you know, it will go water, it will go waste. I mean, why are you worried? So let us use this waste water which is going into the sea. And I think that is, a, that is the idea of the engineers. That is the idea of the, uh, of the policy makers. That it is going waste. And I think that needs to be addressed from the beginning. And uh, Kali, in addition to power generation, 
setting up of the West Coast paper mill. Because when you have a dam, either you have a nuclear power plant or a, a paper mill which can access the water very easily. You know, it's free water. They don't pay for it. So they don't need to kind of address the issues of how do you resolve the crisis of pollution. You know, whether you address it or not, not, they are not bothered. There is a huge dam from which they get free water at any cost. I mean, at no cost at all. So the industries which is affecting. And uh, what this industry is doing? You know, the lead or the mercury being openly, the paper factory is one of the largest uh, polluters of the region. And it is polluting the river to such an extent that not only wildlife, but the entire ecosystem, river ecosystem, is kind of destroyed. And surprisingly, it is despite that, there is no kind of uh, technical efforts to resolve the crisis of uh, pollution, how to address that issue. And what we did to address this issue, you know, 1980s, when uh, Chipko was going on, I was part of the Chipko foot march in the Himalayas. And when I came back from studying in Delhi, came back to my place, I said, we need to start something. There is, there is no movement going on. So how do we start it? And I started uh, walking with the experience of the Chipko, walking from the banks of um, the mouth of the river of Kali in Karwar to the origin of Kali. This was in 1982 when I came back from Delhi. And just walk, walking alone almost. I mean, maybe we'll get some villages to walk. No dams, these big dams were not, no dams were built at all. They were building these dams, but the paper factory was there. So we, uh, I went along the river till the origin and assessed what was happening. And in 19, uh, 2002, after 20 years, we did the same, you know, after building of the dams. Not to spread the message of Chipko or telling them uh, long, giving them long speeches about protecting environment, but to share their, you know, what is their experience of what is happening to the river. And we are trying to give voice to the river in a very different way. Not, not, not telling them, you know, how it is happening, but hearing their stories. And surprisingly, after covering 189 kilometers, I mean, people were there talking and sharing their anguish, etc. We thought, I mean, we have completed another Padhyatra, like the politicians who always do Padhyatra. We have also environmentalist, another Chipko fellow has done the Padhyatra. But suddenly, after we complete, this is in February 2002, April, people launch Kali Bachao Andola, who have been affected by the pollution. They said, look, we are launching the Kali Bachao Andola. And let me tell you, when they said that, I thought it's a very good idea. But what a kind of opposition from the paper mill and the, and the authorities. They said, no, impossible. I mean, we are so, all the problems we'll address. So there is no need to launch Kali Bachao Andola. In fact, people who wanted to launch they were kind of hijacked or taken away by the paper mill. And then we intervened and we were successful in launching the Kali Bachao Andolan to bring pressure. But it was not an easy task at all because we were fighting the establishment and that too, a paper mill which was really, really kind of, I mean, in the south we don't have that kind of gundaism. But this Marwadi company employed that, you know, gunda tactics to fight the movement. But fortunately, with the kind of support we got, we were able to bring pressure on the government to establish a effluent treatment plant and then to stop the sand mining. And then to address the issue of the atomic power plant, you know, which is leaving the water, which is radiated into the, into the river, Kali River, and how it is affecting. So we did kind of analyze with the People's Science Institute in Dehradun what is happening to the river itself and how mercury is affecting the wildlife as well as the, as the people. You know, Kaiga atomic power plant, they are like Kudankulam, they assure you everything is going on fine. But Kaiga people, all the engineers, the colony people, they don't drink the water from Kali. They get it from Berti, which is still not damped. They drink only for from the river which is not from Kali because they know what is happening. 
they have mm. monitored, I mean, they have all the monitoring stations around Kaiga nuclear power plant, which is on the other, other dam of Kali, but they don't share any information as to what is happening. So wh why this secrecy? Uh, we are, I mean, as part of the Kali Bachao Andolan, we are raising these issues. And uh, I won't say that we have succeeded totally in our efforts. The affluent treatment plant is, is there, but whether it functions is very, very difficult. And Central Pollution Control Board has obviously stated in its huge report that how Pollution Control Board, I mean, how the industry, West Coast Paper Mill, is destroying the river, but no action is taken, taken at all. Sand mining is stopped, but through, to address the issue of the mercury pollution from the paper factory, to address the issue of the Kaiga nuclear power plant and its pollution to the river, I think we have not been able to succeed at all. So this is, this is the challenge.